Greetings. Let me give honor to the presence of the Lord Jesus Christ. Certainly he is God and he is worthy of our praise. We have breath this morning in our bodies and so we ought to use it to give him all the praise that is due unto his name. I am tasked this morning to share with you the answers to this particular question, what is the biblical origin and the importance of having an altar? What is the biblical origin and importance of having an altar? To answer this question, we're going to go straight to the text from the book of Genesis chapter 8 is where the first time altar is being mentioned is in this chapter and in particular verse number 20 and it says and Noah built an altar unto the Lord and took up every clean beast and every clean fowl and offered burnt offering on the altar notice that and so we see where Noah after coming off the ark we see God we see him offering before Almighty God a sacrifice we see him it's a, it says a burnt offering before Almighty God and burnt offering in scripture speaks to consecration the giving of oneself completely to Almighty God and no doubt he is giving God thanks likewise because he has just come through a, a, a terrible ordeal where the world was destroyed and he and his family is now saved they've been preserved so it's a time of, a time of thanksgiving for the preservation of his life, his family's life, and, and those who and, and that which remained with him in terms of the animals. It's a place of worship. Here the Lord says in verse 21, And the Lord smelled a sweet savour, and the Lord said in his heart, I will not again curse the ground any more for man's sake. For the imagination of man's heart is evil from his youth. Neither will I again smite any more every living, everything living, as I have done. So here we have communication taking place on the altar. There's a response from Almighty God taking place on the altar. So communion is taking place on this altar. Hallelujah. My God, and no doubt this sacrifice would have met the requirement of Almighty God. Because the Lord classified it as a sweet-smelling savor. So Noah knew exactly then what God required of him. And he did it in response to him to show his consecration. It was also an example because everyone who comes after needs to know that there is a God. And he is to be worshipped. And we have to build an altar to connect to him and to have communion with him. So we're seeing the origin then. Because... No doubt it came from the mind of God. God communicated this. And, and though the word altar is not seen in the book of Genesis 4, we see it being implied in the life of Cain and Abel where they came and offered their sacrifice. One was accepted, the other was rejected. And we know, irrespective of what theologian might say and others might say as to whether or not it should be a blood sacrifice or otherwise. One thing is for sure, the sacrifice that did not meet the requirement wasn't offered in faith. And so one was accepted, the other was rejected. So it's a place of judgment also. It's a place of acceptance or a place of rejection, depending on whether or not we meet the requirement that God have of us. And since we're coming, we're coming in obedience to what he asked of us to build an altar. It suggests that we are coming to worship him. We're coming based on his terms and conditions. It's a place of access to Almighty God. Hallelujah. And so God originated and brought this into play for mankind to be able to communicate with him, to worship him. It's an avenue of expression of our love and our devotion to Almighty God. Hallelujah. So we can have an encounter with God. We can have an experience with God. And it all takes place on an altar. It begins right there. There are different types of altars in the scriptures. The Bible makes reference to altars that are made of stone as against altars that are made out of brass, like that in the tabernacle. It was made out of brass. And the Lord says, if you're going to make it out of brass and you make a ramp, because the altar is an elevated place, and so they had to put a ramp attached to it to go up to the altar. And so if you're going to put made it over brass and you're going to use a ramp, you you cannot put steps on it, can't chisel out steps on it. 
Because if you were to make steps on it and you have to lift your leg, your flesh would be exposed and God would actually pronounce judgment. So again, we're seeing where the requirement has to be met when you come to the altar of God. It's God's altar. It is God's altar. Notice um, the Bible says in Genesis 8.20, an altar was built unto the Lord. The covenant keeping God, capital L-O-R-D, is mentioned in Genesis 8 and verse 20. And so obviously Noah is in relationship with God. And those who are in relationship with God certainly must have an altar. So coming back to the brass altar, you can't put any steps on it because if you do so, then your flesh, the moment you lift your leg, your flesh is going to be exposed. And so no flesh can glory in the presence of God. In other words, not your thoughts, not your opinion as to what you think. And this is further underscored in the building of an altar out of stone. The Lord specifically said, don't put any chisel on it. Don't shape it up. Because we might have the tendency to want to shape it and make it nice and, and um, sharp on the edges and, and, and make it in such a way that it looks, like, it looks nice in our own eyes. God said, I don't want your opinion on my altar. I don't want your thoughts. Do it based on what I require of you. Don't put any chisel on it. Don't put your opinion on it. My God and Savior Jesus. So it's a place where God meets with man. And it's based on his terms and on his condition. Beautiful. And so the, when you look at the importance of the altar, then we can see the importance in the tabernacle plan where God gave Moses the pattern for the tabernacle, a place that pictured his redemptive plan that would be fulfilled in him coming to the earth and laying down his life for us. And so we see a picture of the redemptive plan in the tabernacle. And one of the portraits is that of an altar once you come through the gate, an altar you are faced with, a place, an altar that was made out of brass, and brass in scripture speaks to judgment. And in particular, on this altar, it's judgment against sin. And so the Lord would require of the people to bring an offering for sin. So it's a compulsory offering that must be laid on that altar. They would confess their sins and that animal would be accepted because that animal would have met the requirement that God required of them. And so they would offer a sacrifice for their sin. So this is a place where atonement takes place. So, so, so God can be a peace. God's wrath can be a peace because the wages for sin is death. And mankind cannot approach God with their sins and have fellowship with him. So to get rid of the sin, there needs to be a sacrifice. So you see, God is carving out a way for us to be able to come into communication with him. A sinful mankind to come into a place of communion with the holy God has to meet God's requirement to get to a place where there can be a connection. Hallelujah. Praise God Almighty. Thank you, Jesus, for making a way. And so they would offer sacrifice for sin and forgiveness would be experienced right there. On that same altar, they would offer um, burnt offering, just like Noah did, just like Abraham did, just like the prophets of old did. They would offer a uh, whole burnt offering, which is symbolic of me giving myself completely body, spirit, and soul, completely to Almighty God. Abraham did that when he offered his son. And we saw his love being demonstrated. Because one of the questions you can look at on that experience, from that experience, is whether or not Abraham loves the creation more than the Creator. And to demonstrate that, you've got to make a sacrifice. And that sacrifice has to be placed on an altar. So God has made provisions for us to make connection to him. All right, so it's a place where whole burnt offering. And so we're seeing the importance of it through these types, different types of offering, sin offering, forgiveness is experienced. If we want to be forgiven, there needs to be an altar. If we want peace, a peace offering was offered right there as well. If we want peace, then we need to have that altar. If we want to surrender and give everything to Almighty God in consecrating ourselves to service to God, there needs to be an altar. My God, if we want God's blessing um, on our life in, in providing for us a meal offering, a grain offering will also be, be offered before Almighty God. And God will provide his, uh, God will bless us in return because the sacrifice, meeting the requirement, comes up before God as a sweet smelling savor accepted by Him and He responds to it and His blessing comes upon our lives. How can we apply these, these, these truths to our lives today? We see it. In the book of Romans, for example, chapter 12, where the, Lord said, where the Lord through Paul says, I beseech you, brethren, by the mercies of God, that we present, yield, surrender, 
present our bodies as a living sacrifice, our body that contains our spirit and our soul, so it includes everything, as a living sacrifice, not as dead sacrifices in Old Testament. That means daily as we live, we're living sacrificial lives. We're giving something that costs our life in return. Present our bodies as living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto God, which is our reasonable. So that which God requires of us is, is how we should respond to him. And it is not unreasonable request that he asks of us to give us, to give him everything. It is reasonable for us to present our bodies as a living sacrifice unto him. Holy, it must be holy. It must be acceptable unto Almighty God. And in doing so, we won't be conformed to this world. We will be transformed by the renewing of our minds. It takes place on that altar. The renewal of our mind begins on that altar and it continues as we begin to yield continually our lives to him, living sacrificially, so that we can prove that which is good, acceptable, perfect, the will of God. We're seeing the importance in these verses. So if I want to be accepted by God, I want to experience the peace of God, if I want to connect to God, if I want to be in communion with Almighty God, I need to have an altar. Elijah did well when he contested the Baalites and demonstrated that there is a God. And guess what? The Baalites had their own altar because every God demands an altar. It is a place of worship. But for it to be true worship, it has to meet God requirements. And Elijah demonstrated that. And God heard and answered. And so a time that was taken to erect this altar, 12 boulders, 12 huge boulders for you to put an entire bull on it and cut him in pieces. Just imagine 12 stones to put an entire cow and the sacrifice cannot touch the ground. And, and the, 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 the altar is an elevated place. So these boulders are huge. So you get 12 of them represent the 12 tribe of Israel. It speaks to unity. Kind of symbolic of how hard it is to, to get unity, to get us to come together. Just think of moving those stones to get into a place where they connect together to lay a sacrifice. It's going to require some task. And at the same time, you see time. So we're looking at some of the importance and, and what is required in the, in the process. That even time becomes a sacrifice to Almighty God. Because you're going to now get these boulders, put them in place, put the wood in order. Put the wood in order, put the, cut the sacrifice in pieces. Put the sacrifice on the altar, douse it with 12 barrels of water in a time when water is scarce. Three years of famine. That's great. The man, he hasn't started praying. He's just building an altar. Because he wants to make a connection to Almighty God. He wants to demonstrate the power of God. He wants to show people how to worship the true and living God. He wants people to know that there is a God. And that God has people who serve Him. My God and Savior Jesus. May our hearts be blessed and we apply these truths to our lives. And come into a deeper relationship and fellowship with Almighty God. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you tremendously. In Jesus Christ's name.